Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Torge Petersen from the Software PE Group at Danfoss Power Solutions. In this video I will show you new features and changes of the latest version 0.20.1 of the mobile service tool web portal. Since the last release of the mobile service tool web page, uh, a couple of new features in the latest release version 0.20.1 has been added and known issues has been fixed. If you logged into the service tool web portal under plus1cloud.danfoss.com, all these fixes and new features are listed under what's new. I will go through all these new features and show where you will find and how to use them. The first listed item is the cookies pop-up, which might be known already from other tools like Guide, Service Tool and the Update Center, just to let the user know which cookies are used by this application and give them the possibility to control them by yourself. This will only pop up first time you enter the plus1cloud.danfoss.com page or if you have deleted the cache of your browser. Next feature refers to the user management under administration inside a group. Now the user is not manageable via the group owner only. The owner or any other user of a group can invite other user and set the role as well. The invited user will receive an email from the plus one cloud mail server where he can join the group by just pressing the link. During this, the invited user will be asked to log in with his account and will be ended on the mobile service tool web portal inside that group he got invited from. There he has a possibility to accept or decline this invite. As long the invited user has not accepted or declined this invite, the inviter himself can revoke his invite, which is the same if the invited user declined. Any user can check this in the profile folder invitations where he is able to accept or decline an existing invitation. Any user of a group do also have the possibility to leave a group. To do so, go to groups in the user menu to see all groups you are a member of. There you can see your role and under actions, you can click on leave to leave this group. Under packages, the user has the possibility to upload documents and firmware files also in the previous version. To show the upload process, the progress bar has been added. Another new feature under packages is to clone a package. So any existing package can be cloned with all his content like applications, firmware, documents, and system, except the releases. In addition, a package can be cloned to any available group the user is a member of. Next feature refers also to packages where the user can copy a package to use it elsewhere. This feature is called fork and do have the same result as the previously introduced feature clone package. The difference is that via fork you can copy a released package only including the applications, firmware and documents. The releases are not part of the forked package. So inside the packages under releases, the user can select a release package and choose fork. Both fork and clone packages give the user the possibility to use a package and its content with already made settings for other projects in different groups rather than having to start from scratch or rebuild an existing one. The following features refers to the application editor on the web portal. In previous version, fixed colors has been used for brand, primary and page background. On the main page of the application inside the application editor, these colors are now customizable. The brand color is used for the menu bar and an active menu item. Primary color is used for the buttons and the background color used on every page. If you click on the color icon, the color palette will be shown, which provides any available color selectable from the color spectrum directly, or you can type in the color code and hex RGB or HSL values. When adding bars and lines to the chart, they will be given different colors from the predefined palette. So if you add a new line or chart, a color will be pre-selected, which has not been chosen before for any other line or chart. Via the color palette, any available color can be selected. Next feature, additional component called header. A header component is like a text component, but with the property preset with title, font size, and alignment. 
Three header presets are available by default, header 1, 2, and 3, which can be expanded by additional. On the main page of the application, the header presets can be added. For each header, the user can set up the preset title, font size, and alignment. After selecting a header component, the preset can be chosen in the header properties. On the one hand, a header makes it easier to use a text component with preset values. On the other hand, unlike a text component, the font size of a header can be changed. Similar to the bar and line charts, the configuration of numeric components has been modified. Inside the numeric signal properties, you will find the added functionality to set areas to display on the control. Inside the configure areas, you can define multiple areas of that numeric signal. Via range, you specify the signal range and set the respective color. So as long as the current value is between this range, the specified color is shown. In addition, you can also set the flash functionality. If this is true, the signal component will flash as long as the value is between the defined range. The last three features are all related to the application simulator. The simulator can be opened via the button simulator on the top right inside the application editor. The first simulator or simulation modification is the added landscape orientation, where you can switch between portrait and landscape mode. Next simulation modification is the support of custom devices. So instead of the default devices with their fixed sizes, you have the possibility to choose custom from the drop-down list. Via the width and height parameter, you can set any size, which makes the simulator more flexible and usable for any devices. And last but not least, the most powerful change inside the simulator is the signal simulator, which you will find on the left side of the simulator page. This um, signal simulator gives the possibility to test the application with simulated values. Signals you use on a specific page in this application are all signals from the used system specification file. For each signal, you can choose a simulation type constant or random. For the type constant, you can just define the value manually. And for the type random, you can define the value range. You can watch how the simulated values will be displayed in the application and on the selected device. You can click directly inside the screen, switch between pages, set parameter, close the window, everything which can be used at the end on your mobile. This helps the application developer to check in front each settings, the handling and the usability. The last change refers to the system specification. In the latest Service 2 version 2021.2, the format of the system specification file has been changed. Using older versions of the system specification format can result in some applications not being available. So a new system specification needs to be created from Service Tool and added to the mobile Service Tool package. Existing packages can be updated via Edit System, choose the JSON file with the updated format and save. Please use the available documentation to find more description about mobile service tool in general and some step-by-step -step instructions. On what's new, you can find all added, changed and fixed features and known issues as well. Via support, you will be directed to the Plus One Helpdesk technical support to create a Helpdesk ticket and send it with your description, question or feedback to the Helpdesk team. We hope that you found this video useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel or contact the Plus One Help Desk. Thank you for your attention.